What is up YouTube? JPR Tech here. Now, if you clicked on this video, it's most likely because your camera is suffering from more air, or maybe if you're like me right now, shooting in the Canon EOS M at the 1080p mode, we do suffer from more air badly. And if you recall on my last video, I really want to encourage you guys to stick with 5K FRTP. Now, if you shoot short bursts, then just shoot them all out. 3k that's the best way to go but if you have no choice for example right now i'm shooting with the 22 mil f2 lens which if i were to shoot in 5k for tp will be like two times crop it'll be too tight of a shot so it's unusable for this kind of scenario so i am forced to shoot in 1080p with that said adding a black black mist filter helps a lot with the more but yet it's still there it doesn't go away completely so right now we're going to head over to the Binji and I'm going to show you guys how to get rid of it for free. Now I know the Binji has a plugin. They do have an effect in the color space that you're able to remove the chromatic aberration or all that aliasing and more. And it works great. But the problem is since I'm using the free version, there's this huge splash screen and I can't use the clip. So we're going to find out how to work around using the nodes, primary colors, the bars, and the RGB mixer. And with the composite mode, we're able to clean up a lot of this more. Now it's not gonna be perfect. I know we can't get rid of it because what's baked in to our clip and our footage is there. The camera suffers from more and that's it. But it does help a lot. And especially for close up shots where you have your subject or your object is close to the sensor and you blur out the background, you're able to clean up things really nicely. So let's head over to DaVinci and show you how to do it. So here we are in DaVinci. This is the video that I'm making right now. And this is all raw, unedited 1080p footage, as you could see right here. Let's just fix this aliasing and more that we could see actually right here on the hair. Look at that more. That is just horrific. And if we go over here to this other clip, look at that more right there. You can see like pinks and greens everywhere. And here's a close up of some rocks by the river. And again, we got the more going on right here on the water splashes. Close up shot of the bridge up there. And you could see again, the more is just horrific in 1080p. Here's another shot that might be useful for you. Like if you're doing product videography or shooting some b-rolls in 1080p for 14 bit if you look at the 23 there number eight you could see some red and green it's actually still not bad this clip for a 1080p but we're gonna fix things up really quick this one is not as pronounced but it's still there there's some green right here all right so let's just fix this head over to the color space and we're gonna go to a really easy to see shot. This one is pretty easy to see, right? All right, so we'll keep an eye on this roof right here and on the bridge, and let's get started. So you wanna add a node hitting the Alt-S or Option-S if you're on Mac, and actually I am on a Mac, <laughs> Option-S, or just right click, add a node, and it's gonna be a serial node. So you get a serial node, and then you're gonna turn this serial node into a parallel node. So go ahead and right click the second node, add a node, and hit add parallel node. So we should have two nodes stacked together, and they come and join in this, um, I don't know what this is called, but this is just the morph into layer mix node. Now we wanna morph this into a composite. We, got, we wanna change the composite mode of this. Hit add and it's gonna be super ugly and bright cause it's just adding this clip on top of this one. It's just gonna be super bright. So let's head down to the bottom parallel node, the one at the bottom. You wanna head over to your color bars. I'm already here. So if you're on the color wheels, just look over on these icons right here, you're gonna have your log wheels and your color bars. Lower the gain all the way to zero. Well, technically we can't do zero, it only does 0 0.01, but lower it to the bottom. Then we're gonna head over to the blur tab and sharpness tab, and your radius, just crank it up. 
and what we're doing is really blurring out let's see what we're watching on this you see that this is the bottom node this is what we see it's just a black blue red blur so we're trying to blur out all these reddish colors you see how all that red noise we're just trying to blur it out and smoothen out see that pretty cool right and after you're done with the bottom node let's head over to the top node and on the top node you want to go to your rgb mixer which is next to your wheels right here we're gonna head over to the bottom and check the monochrome and look at that you see what happened look at the more now you see it now you don't and last but not least we head over to our main clip now if you want to add other clips for your white balance and your sharpness and corrections whatever you want to do go ahead and feel free to do that uh, before your more fix but personally i keep things i keep things simple i head over to my camera raw go to the project select clip color space black magic design and it automatically turns my gamma into the black magic design film so it looks like a very loggy style of you know it looks very log like clip so everything looks plain so let me zoom out now that the more is gone basically it's gone look at that we could do all the edits we want you could either edit just by yourself here cranking up the saturation that looks pretty good but i'm gonna use my favorite lot which is the phantom utopia lot that's designed for sony but look at that look how well it looks on an eos m you see that let's do that again look at that this is without the lot bam looks amazing and pretty much we are done and look at that more is gone let's go ahead and play the clip look no more basically gone isn't that cool and last but not least if you want to add sharpness you know feel free to do that if you want on your original clip your edit clip you could add a little bit of sharpness i don't like to add too much because it kind of artifacts the whole clip so just be gentle with it and if you want to add even more punchy crispy looking clip head over to the top parallel node the top one and the blur and sharpness menu you want to just tap it a little bit down like 48 47 around there let's just keep it a 48 i don't want to be too sharp and there you have it that is it we are done and i'm going to hit option one to save this whole color preset so now when i head over to another clip i just hit the command one and it applies everything we did here all the layers and parallel notes all the composite more everything is applying look at that we are done with that clip maybe we could check let's tap a little bit the exposure maybe the shadows a little bit there we go now we have this nice clip oh this one is horrific look at that bridge let's zoom in there Ooh, look at all that green and <laughs> wow that is pretty bad pink and green everywhere let's hit command one and more i order you to be gone bam gone where did it go sweet look at that and we got some amazing phantom lock area alexis light colors beautiful in 14-bit goodness now how about the indoor shot let's check it out it's all right we got the funky colors well actually it's not bad actually this clip is pretty good maybe this some more right here some chromatic aberration around here oh this one is pretty bad right there all right let's see it command one be gone look at that it turns silver everything white and the clip is actually exposed pretty well we got good exposure maybe a little bit more crank it up a little bit and i want to be cooler because we're in the indoor shot oh man this is looking beautiful all right now we're gonna save this to another preset so let's hit option two or alt two to save it on my number two keyboard keyboard shortcut so we go over here and let's do the command two bam Woo! guys this is 1080p you know what 
let's go ahead and do our main clip here. This is the conclusion, concluding comment for this whole video. We're going to get to that after we finish this tutorial. So let's do command two. All right, so we are done. So we're going to save this to preset number three. Bam, command three. Actually, it's a little bit overexposed, right? There we go. We are done. All right, so now that we're done, how to do this? I got to finish this video. So let's head back to our conclusion right here. So guys, what do you guys think? It was pretty simple, right? To just, with a couple of notes, a couple of tweaks here and there, we cleaned up really nicely. And if you're enjoying the footage you're seeing right now, this is all again, 1080p, 14 bit, uh, with the Canon EOS M, and we know that it suffers from more, but it's not looking too bad, if I may say so. So if you're into this whole DIY how-tos or reviews of things that are products that are not new, not great, not the latest and greatest, consider subscribing to the channel because that's what I do. It's like I just looked over the things that are really old, cheap and free and just try to make the best of what we got. So we don't have to run out and get the latest and greatest. Now that we got 1080p fix for this kind of headshot kind of thing, it's very usable, really clean. I'm gonna be using this for my headshots a lot more often. Now my main camera is usually, it's the one I usually shoot with is the Fujifilm X-H1 with the 23mm F2, which is actually super similar to what we're shooting with right now. Again, that's the 22mm and both cameras, I will leave them in 1080p because 1080p is good enough for this kind of shot. Now the clip you're watching right now is again, this whole setup is the Fujifilm X-H1 with the 23mm F2 and it looks really clean. I did shoot in classic Chrome though. I usually shoot in F-Log, but this time I was just doing a quick run and gun test and wanted to compare that to the EOS M 22mm f2 lens and both of them were shot wide open. What do you guys think? I One thing that I observe is how much detail the EOS M is. I don't know if that's because of the 14 bit, the X, the shooting in DNG, you know, having raw, but it just looks so much detail and the color is so rich. Whereas the Fujifilm, it is cleaner, it's neater, but it still has like the digital kind of look. So I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, it's very digital like, and the EOS M is just, yeah, one word we could describe it, it's just raw. Guys, so if you found this video helpful, hit a thumbs up, like. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys again on the next one. Peace.